Welcome back to another episode of Over the Glass. I am your host, Jay. I'm co-host Nessa, and today we have Kurt here joining us. I don't really think he needs much introduction. I'd imagine a number of folks who may tune into this will be familiar with him, but he is a Sharks fan. He's a fellow artist, and he is the founder of Teal City Crew. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, like how you identify your journey to becoming a Sharks so, fan? Uh, I am he, him. Uh, I've been a Sharks fan since 2006, 2006 question mark. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I went to my first game in 2006. It was a four nothing route of, uh, was it, the Phoenix Coyotes with Wayne Gretzky as the head coach and Curtis Joseph and net, and there was a line brawl in the third. It was like the ultimate. This whoever's here for their first game, congratulations! You just became the biggest hockey fan in the world because the stars aligned for this to be your sport. <laughs> But with uh, that, afterward, I left hockey for a quick minute, but I was still learning how to ice skate, and I got into uh, soccer a little bit, and I saw the supporters clubs, and it looked super fun, and then I find out in Europe, they're doing this at hockey games, and I said, okay, well, let's bring some flags, let's bring some chants, let's just be loud and well, loud and proud, just like our slogan is for Teal City Crew. So uh, it, it was a slow process, but seven years later, here we are, and here I am. <laughs> I do have a story to uh, jump from what you were talking about in Europe, how they kind of emulate some of the supporter energy that you see at soccer games. Because um, I lived out in Germany for a little bit, and during the brief lockout i think it was the what 2012 2013 i can't remember the exact years anyways the brief lockout so you know nhl players or like pro hockey players are trying to find um somewhere to play in the meantime and i saw that joe thornton was coming out to play in switzerland for hc davos and i was freaking out because you know i'd been out in germany for over a year at that point so i hadn't gone to a single sharks game since then and i was just like i need to go to this game i need to figure out how to get my butt down to switzerland and i took like a day how do i get into the mountains yeah right <laughs> and i think that was announced on a monday or tuesday and i'd never seen this team before they were out in like uh eastern switzerland i I hadn't been that far and I was just like, I just need to go to this game. I, I took the day off. I drove down there halfway down going there. I was telling myself, you know, he might not even play in this game. You might just go to this game and he, they won't even put him in this game yet, but he went, he was in the game and it was a very small rink. It was probably the size of like what, um, the Barracuda's rink looks like now. And the energy, like, I I hadn't been as big of a soccer fan at the time, but the few games that I did go see, it emulated a lot of what you, you were saying that you noticed. Versus Can we also stop real quick mm -hmm. and let's talk about the roof at that arena? And, and if you don't know, Google Valley Arena and look at beautiful pictures of basically what is a hockey church. If hockey Ooh, is your religion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because my goodness, that that roof is gorgeous. Wow. Sorry. I'm looking at it now. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 one of my I need to go before I die places. So, yeah, the energy was very similar to the soccer games that I had been to and coming from mostly being in the sport of hockey it was it was such a contrast to it and i and i want it and like you i wanted to kind of have that vibe i wanted to have you know like when you go into hockey games here i mean everyone's kind of spread out so i mean there's pros and cons to that but just the energy that a supporter section brings 
and how they're all kind of like uniform and they've got their chance. And I remember whenever um, there was a goal scored during the game that I went to go watch, like the, the announcer and the audience were kind of, you know, playing off of each other. I think the announcer would say the first name of the goal scorer and then the audience would um, say the last name. So it was just like this, this fun conversation that you're having that kind of, you know, brings that extra element of what, uh, what I look forward to when I go to, when I go to games. Experience. I mean, that's, that's what it's mostly about. It's, it's creating your own experience without the front office involved necessarily, like not, not necessarily without them because they're, there's a few like cogs in the big machine that is the San Jose Sharks that allow us to do the things that we do. But the experience itself is created by the fans for the fans because right. you don't have to be involved to experience it and you don't have to like it to also experience it as people, you know, you never hear anybody from Europe going, those people are way too loud. No, it's part of the, it's part of the game at that point. That's what I try to emulate. That's what I tried to bring here. Uh, even if it's just a little bit, obviously we can't bring in, what they bring in like flares and smoke, not smoke bombs, but like flares they'll bring indoors. And like in California, in the United States in general, fire marshals would be like, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Just what are you doing? We're in a drought. Flat out. <laughs> Go through like the metal detector and you've got stuff all in your pockets. <laughs> I don't know how that got there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you in charge of the marches to the tank? Was that, did you start So that? the conversation started. Absolutely. I, I definitely, I'm, I'm not tooting my own horn, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's definitely this uh, give and take situation with the Sharks front office of like, I said something about let's do something like, uh, you know, a march to the arena and then about two months later during the playoffs, they were just like, hey, we're going to have one. Do you want to be involved? And I'm like, absolutely. Let's do it. And then the first one, second one happened. Each playoff game, we had one. And then he who shall not be named in arena host uh, <laughs> okay. uh, decided to, I, I guess I'll elaborate later, uh, left. And there was this big hole because Emily didn't have experience yet with leading people. You know, like she she was she's a great host. She's been doing she did great for San Diego Gulls. I saw a lot of her experience there. Uh, but then we went into uh, a season without him. And they said, hey, do you want to lead it? And I said, absolutely. So like. It's, it's so grassroots more than you think. Like you think this is big organization and all of a sudden San Pedro Square has no idea who we are and what we're doing. And they're like, so why do you have these big boxes and all these drums on our property? And I'm just trying to talk to security like, hey, I'm, I'm with, with the San Jose Sharks. And uh, we got it straightened out to the point where I got to like after the band stopped playing because I think it was on a Friday for opening day uh, in 2019. They said, uh, do, do you want to go on stage? I'm like, sure. I grabbed the microphone. Hi, I'm Kurt from Teal City Crew. We're about to all march. Finish in your drinks and food. Voice. Let's <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Suddenly it became Mickey Mouse. It's weird. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, then then we walked down the street and, and uh, Sharky took over a little bit, but that's his his personality. So that's OK. And uh, we marched down and it, it was super fun. And every year that we do it and every game that we do it, hopefully more playoff ones in the near future. Uh, they're 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 always great because those are the times where you're not in the arena that you can actually start something new. Uh I, I've noticed it's really hard to do it in arena, but when you're outside of the arena, out of everybody's comfort zone, that's when we can have a little bit more fun. And like we were doing one for like San Jose, <laughs> San Jose. Oh, sorry, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> San Jose, clap, and everybody loved it. And um, 
you know, the Quakes use that as well. Uh, the Quakes fans use that. And we don't necessarily borrow from each other because, you know, we, we're trying to be an original concept without taking too much from soccer. We're uniquely hockey. And our message is uniquely hockey. So, so I remember the first time I noticed the march. I don't remember if it was the first game I went to, but I re- I was with my girlfriend, and I was like, "Are they are they marching?" Like we noticed you guys were actually marching towards the tank. I'm like, "Is this like, is this legit? Like this is happening? This is it's so cute. Like I like this. I love this." <clears throat> um, and since then, like. I, I'm a relatively new Sharks fan. I just started following them back in 2016. So we would notice your flags and stuff when we go into games. We're like, those are cool. Like, She was part of the Reddit community and would keep up with some of the events you did, to, did with um, fans and whatever you put together. And she would always just like, she'd want to join, but both of us are so like introverted that we never really took that step to and so it's really funny how it kind of comes full circle because like now we're talking to you now i'm gonna want to be involved in these events that you're putting together and i'll drag her along (laughs) yeah i mean the events are to create something that's uniquely san jose and uniquely sharks fan without the overreach of corporate partnerships, uh, sponsorships, stuff like that. You know, like if, if the sharks have an official pizza brand, uh, what I, I have full freedom to go to a different pizza shop and have a watch party at a different pizza shop. That's local that can't afford a sponsorship. I, I you know, I don't have millions of dollars to spend. I don't have tens of dollars to spend, <laughs> but you know, I, what I can do is use social media as a reach. Like, uh, we were going to the last round, which is a, a boxing based pizza place down on Santa Clara, but we had a fun watch party. And something that I've noticed too, is people who like the people who do show up have an absolute blast. And it doesn't matter if it's, you know, me, my girlfriend and three other people, I've had just as much fun with five people as I have had with meeting up in Vegas with 300 people under the giant lady statue, like outside of their arena and taking a group photo. Like it's, it's not about the volume. It's about how much fun we have regardless and talking about regardless, show up anyway, please come out. Let's have some fun. The more that we get involved, the more people that show up, the more that we can give, prizes to you know i i bring boxes of prizes that i've collected over the years from donation from the sharks directly and i love to give away prizes but it's not as fun when f- five people show up and i give five people prizes <laughs> it's fun for those five people <laughs> and i'll tell you i have like one of every single jersey to give away i have pox like right, I, right here i have like just random pox from throughout the years that I want to give away and, and, you know, just, it's an incentive. Sure. But it's also like, if you're one of five people, every game, you're probably going to get something every single game. (laughs) So we're going to ask you a little bit about how you create a safe space or LGBTQ representation within Steel City crew. A very detailed road. I, I, I have to think about that for a second because So first of all, I am an out pansexual man. Um, I've had experiences in locker rooms uh, that are not ideal in my life or in anybody's life um, that I can totally see why people stay in the closet in the sport of hockey and in sports in general. Uh, And this also goes into fanhood. You know, you have people calling players slurs and you're sitting right next to them I'm not going to come out to you. You're, you're right there, you know, saying things. And so when I first started TCC, I didn't care about how many members we had. And I, I still don't because I want authentic fans. I want people who are fans of fans. 
I'm a fan of you. You're a fan of me. You, you just told me that you saw us walking down the street and you're a fan of me. And chances are you probably saw a pride flag in that, in that because I threw one in there and it was always a test market, whatever that was to say that we're here. Like there's someone in there in that group that identifies the same way as you do. And I think it all started with one fan posting about our trans flag. We had a trans flag hanging. And one morning I got a tweet and someone said, but why do you have to have the trans flag hanging on the wall? And this was at the end of pride. Uh, uh, it was the end of the sharks pride month. I, f I forgot which month it is, but it's like towards the end of the season. I think it's in March. And I, yeah. And so I said, you know what? Thank you. You, you actually were the catalyst, sir. I kept the flag up for the rest of the season, including playoffs. And I said, it, not to piss somebody off, but realizing that he was one of the reasons why I had it up in the first place. And one month isn't going to be sustainable to make sure that everybody knows that what we represent. And I guess I'll go deeper into like my experiences. I've worked in ice rinks. Uh, I've worked in outdoor rink, uh, but in Southern California at the time uh, that I was living in, uh, I worked for the Anaheim Ducks. And uh, this doesn't represent what the Ducks fans are or hockey players in Southern California. This was a one experience. Um, but I had an experience where some guy dropped a slur. Um, to another player and nobody did a thing about it. Now, this is against USA Hockey Code. This is against all the rules of our building USA Hockey as a whole. And I hit the buzzer. The, the game was, the game was, uh, the play was stopped at the time and they were about to drop the puck and I just hit, eh, 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 press the button and the ref was looking at me like, this guy's crazy. What, what, why are you stopping the game? This is a beer league game at 930. I want to go home to my wife. Skates over. What's up? I said, this guy in the, in the, in the uh, penalty box just says a word that I don't appreciate. And it's against the rules. And he's like, kind of shocked. Like, wait, what? I said, no, no, no. He said a word. And um, it was the other F word. And he, what do you want to do? And I said, he's suspended. This is the rules. Like, I know I'm not an official. I'm an office official. I don't have any credentials for it, but I work for the rink and this doesn't represent the rink. And I took a sigh and he goes, okay. Got off the ice, uh, talked to the guy. Guy kind of looked pissed. And then all of a sudden, he looked shocked like oh, I said something and uh, he apologized to me the next day he wasn't allowed on property but he came to my work and apologized and I said I don't want you to be sorry I want you to be better I want you to be a better person this is a life lesson at the time I was like 23 24 and here's this 40 50 year old dude who you know is in a beer league hockey game and I made him up drive all the way here, apologize just to get it thrown back into his face. But for a great reason, I don't want anybody to be sorry for being a bigot or a homophobe or even just using, not using their brain when talking the, the, the American vernacular. It's that I had to tell him, I don't want you to be sorry anymore. Now it's the time for action. Now is the time for you to, to be that person that you were sorry being and not use words like that ever again and change your mindset. You're probably using these words at home. Your kids are probably playing junior hockey and guess what they're saying in the locker rooms. And then the cycle starts all over again. And what this means is for all of us, and this is for allies, 
this is this is not for queer folks. This is not for queer folks at all. This is for allies. If you really care, I'm going to look right at the camera. If you really care, do something about it. There, there is, there is nothing like action. If someone says something, do something about it. Even if it's not giving a platform, whatever it is. Sorry, rant over. Going back to story, it's it, it, it's passionate to me, because I face these things in locker rooms. I've been kicked out of lockers because the gay kid is in the locker room. I don't want him to see my stuff. And that's not okay. And so I bring that to TCC. Let's go full circle. I bring that back to TCC. And I don't ever want a kid joining TCC and feeling like they don't belong. And uh, so we've become this like little hive mind of degenerates queers and and <laughs> you know what i mean like we're, we're just a bunch of ragtag people um that you wouldn't expect at a hockey game you know we have you know mexican americans from the east side we have gay folks coming from san francisco we have you know ironically enough we've had like christians in our group before so you know it's it's literally for everyone as long as you're not a dick. <laughs> that's 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 the honest truth about everything. And that's why I do it. I mean, we've we've had somebody reintroduce themselves and said, Hey, um, I'm not the person you met anymore. Uh, this is my name now. This is who I identify now. And I said, I know, you're good. Welcome back. I'm glad to re-meet you. I'm, I'm glad to meet your authentic self and to, to get a text like that and saying that, hey, you're the reason why I was confident to come out in public completely changed my life. Like it was unreal to me uh, that I made someone that comfortable, that I helped make someone that comfortable. And so this is why I do it every day. It's not about fame or popularity. If you noticed... There's no pictures of me on the Teal City Crew socials for the past like two seasons. And there's a good reason. I, It's not about me. This is not my club. This is your club and your club and your club and your club and your club. I could leave for all that matters. And if someone leaves, the message of Teal City Crew never changes because I helped create that foundation. And uh, I hope that foundation stays uncracked and eventually we're, we're just uh, we're just a big group of, of people who care about each other as much as the team on the ice. Wow. I wanted to cry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know um, we're just getting into it. And yeah, I wanted to kind of jump off of what you're talking about, your experience with um, working within the Anaheim Ducks um, organization and that experience you had with that person um, saying a homophobic slur. Um, I mean, I know it, I've talked on a couple of episodes a lot about my experience getting into the sport and being um, in this area for the most part in the Bay Area. You can be who you are. I mean, that's not to say that you won't find yourselves in situations where people have grown up with that type of language and they don't realize that they're that it's hurtful to folks and but I think it is important to have allies who are aware and you can go and tell them hey I need support here I need your help I need you know because sometimes I feel like I find myself in situations where given my personality like I feel so overwhelmed to speak up that I almost kind of take myself out of the equation. I almost kind of just run away from it, which I'd imagine a lot of folks in who have grown up in places where it's not so accepting. That is their first line of defense. They just won't even put themselves in that situation to begin with. But uh, when I came back to the Bay Area around 2014 and I went to Shark's Eye, so I was looking for a new team to join. The first team that I joined was just 
the worst. They were a bunch of like macho dudes who were obsessed with winning. And I, that whole season, I think the season was like, what, five months long? That whole season, I don't even think I had a conversation with somebody on the bench. I think I came into the locker room to like before the game and after the game and I like had no interactions. There just felt like nobody wanted to talk to me. Nobody, you know, like there was not that camaraderie that I'm used to feeling that you should feel when you're part of a team. And I remember I was already playing. And you pay so much money too. Right. And like- and and you're not getting what you want out of it. You're not pl- you're not paying to play hockey. You're playing to have an experience. Mm-hmm. And I remember already three fourths down the season, I was already realizing I'm not rejoining this team after this. There's nothing rewarding about it. Like I don't even get to go out on the ice and enjoy myself because I don't connect with any of these guys, and they don't feel like they want to connect with me. I think there's maybe one or two guys that were just like the nicest, but for the most part, I didn't really feel like they could be the saving grace for me. And the catalyst was, I was on the bench for for a game and there was something going on on the ice right in front of us. And the dude who was on my line, he decided he wanted to make some comment at the guy who was being ridiculous on the other team. And he made a misogynistic comment. And my heart sunk into my stomach and just everything kind of froze up. And I saw at the corner of my eye that he turned to me because like no doubt he knew, oh, crap, maybe I shouldn't say this next to somebody who is AFAB. And I was just like, I don't even like... Even if I brought this up to you, it wouldn't even matter because I don't even care about you, dude. And you clearly don't care about me. No one has cared about me on this team. And you don't care enough to even be like, just in case, I'm sorry for saying that. And that after that season, I left and I joined another team. And the two teams that I've been on since then, they've been the most inclusive that I've had in like a, like a co-ed Um, environment. There's folks that I feel like I can go to and be like, hey, there's this thing that it's hard when you join a team that's so tight niche and you don't want to be that person to like drop the bomb in there. But it's helpful when you have folks that you understand have the best interest for you as well and can be that mediator. And that's kind of what I was thinking about as well when you're talking about creating uh, Teal City Crew And folks, you know, you're you're like the misfits out of like the stereotypical hockey culture. Like, oh, if you're not X, Y, Z, well, we don't even want you in this space. But there's folks that can enjoy the sport and they need a space to go to. And that's kind of what I was thinking of when you were mentioning just the environment you you like to um, to have. And also mentioning how it's not about you. It's about everybody who who comes into the space. They make the space. Oh, yeah. And it's 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 not the Kurt show. You know what I mean? Uh, but the fact that you resonated with the story just shows that we all have stories. That that we every single fan has a story because we all experience life. And so to anybody who's listening. If you had an experience and you don't have to share it, I don't want you to share it because some of that is super traumatic. I'm, I'm not saying stuff that is super traumatic to me because it would resonate too much with people. You know, like I said, I've been kicked out of locker rooms. That's so degrading. And, and this is the sport I love. What am I getting in return out of it? You know, I'm at an age now where I don't have to worry about, what I'm getting in return. You know, I'm not doing for a return. I'm doing it to create a legacy to help other people. And uh, so thank you for sharing that story because it it just further proves that we're all experiencing something. That guy is not going to change his mind. He looked at you because he got caught. 
not because of what he said. And, and you got to remember that like he, he got caught. He's going to still say stuff like that. He's probably said stuff like that since you left the team. So it, it's, it doesn't stop until we implement rules that are stricter and we have referees that are understanding because uh, what's the phrase that I'm looking for? There's, there's, there's a phrase that, and I, I hate using the, the whole German terminology of stuff like that, but there's the only no tolerance is towards no tolerance. And it's like a, um, what is it called? Not a theory, but where it loops that thing. Like it'll just create an everlasting loop of like, oh, well, if we tolerate intolerance, there's still intolerance, <laughs> you know? But then the people say stuff like, oh, like, like the phrase so much for the, for the tolerant left or whatever. And it's like, okay, cool. You know, I'm not, I'm not tolerant. Not anymore. The tolerant, the tolerance in me left when me and, and, and people I identify with get attacked and I'm very lucky, you know, I'm, you look at me, I look like a typical bro dude. You put a, you put a fitted, not a fitted, uh, a I wouldn't, snapback I wouldn't cap call on you a bro dude. <laughs> That's not the vibe <laughs> oh, you I gave off. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank God. I've seen a lot of cool. bro dudes. <laughs> <laughs> but like you, but you put a snapback on me and I have a little tuft of hair out and I'm just, you know, put some golf shorts on me and all of a sudden, like, I'm exactly like all of them. I, I, I would fit in. And I, you know, I guess call me lucky, like I said, but that means my voice has to be louder for the people who can't speak. You already said that you felt like you had to step back and that's okay because it's not your place to, to necessarily fight your own battles. It's up to people, first of all, allies, but, but also the people that don't have to face the same struggles. I walk into a room, I'm not going to get any looks. You know, if you walk in with your girlfriend, you're definitely going to get looks. Still, here in California, 2022, still going to get looks. Are, are, they, are they together? Oh like, <laughs> Are they holding hands? <laughs> oh my God. Did they just kiss? What's going on? Relax. Like, you know what I mean though? But I walk into a room... I'm in a, you know, what everybody would call a cis hetero relationship. I guess I'm lucky, whatever, whatever that means in America, right? Uh, there, there's a band called AJJ and they, they have a, a song called American and the words are literally, um, uh, I'm a straight white male in America. I've got all the luck I need. And it's about flipping a, a penny that you find on the ground because you don't need the luck. You're already a straight white male in America. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I live by that because I, I don't need the luck that some people need more of. That's why I fight. That's why I do it. That's why I talk about it. That's why we're here today talking about it. I do. I do want to. I do want to share an experience of some bro dude moments that I've had on my team, which in their own way kind of shows to me that they they enjoy having me on the team enjoy having me in the locker room because uh there's moments on the ice where i mean i'm like half the size of most guys that are they're playing out there and you know i'll fall yeah. over easily or things will look a little like no didn't necessarily come in to board me it's just if they do it to another player their size that it, that result would not have happened but this is a Dano Chara rule. Yeah. So, but there's been times where that's happened and the guys on my team that are out on, on my line have come up and been like, Oh, you're going to do that to them. You're going to do that to them and whatever. And I'm like, dude, you guys just caught, you know, they do the whole like bro dude thing, but I'm like, Oh, this is their way of showing me they care. <laughs> it's just, it's so weird though. Cause I'm just like, I just tripped guys. Just, <laughs> Don't go at this dude, but I'm just like, yeah, go after him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're funny. 
But yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to share that moment. Um, Beautiful. So we wanted to kind of shift gears and kind of talk about your journey as an artist, your career path going forward. We've seen a lot of your stuff, especially since you're doing the Sharks program right now with Adobe. And we just kind of, you know, both me and Nessa have some uh, design background and we always love talking art. So if you want to kind of share a bit of what inspires well, like you. Like many of us artists, oh, God. it all started on a <laughs> terrible website called Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm very familiar. <laughs> uh, before the Yahoo buy-in or buyout. Um, I created a blog called Shark Tank back in 2012. 2011? 2011. Wow. It's been that long. Okay. Uh, so 2011 hit uh, and I started making graphics. Uh, there's some that are still around. Like I see like 60 year old ladies on Facebook making it their default photo on face, like, like in, in the sharks groups and uh feels great. But uh, yeah, I was just making graphics like just for fun. Uh, my stepdad growing up uh, was a comic book artist or inker, um, also an artist, uh, but he was an inker for different comics. He was an apprentice, uh, so I can't really say names because apprentices get paid under the table, but very popular ones that rhyme with Lamific. Jim, uh, a graphic novel that turned into a movie. Um, <laughs> you all got it. Cool. Um, but uh, he had Photoshop on his computer. Photoshop 7. Little eye with the, the camera lens on the eye. May she Missed rest that computer in peace. Program. Yes. <laughs> in pieces. Yes. Um, <laughs> sorry, your program is shut down would you like to reset uh because that was it every single minute but yeah so I, I i learned before youtube university ever existed before you know youtubing it to find out how it works i did the tried and true method of what does this do oh don't want that try that oh don't want that and i started making shapes and i started going on sportslogos.net and aesthetics.com and was pulling logos and pulling designs and uh it started with like sportslogos.net's their 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 forum and i saw um back, you, you remember back when forums were super popular they had like the signature box and some people would have a list of their teams with little tiny little rectangles about this big that you would put and you just put each of your teams with a cool graphic and I was like how do I do that <laughs> how do I I want to do that and so that's how I started like you know making sure that lines are clean and logos are clean and nothing's too vectorized and all that fun stuff and from there I learned more and more in high school I, w I went to a continuation in high school because I was homeschooled and didn't work out for me uh you know, you give a kid a computer with no supervision, with MySpace at the time, not doing schoolwork. Uh, enrolled in Continuation High School. They had a Photoshop program. I was the first kid to use the program in like three years. They were using Photoshop 7 in 20, 2008. And um, my final actually was a Photoshop project for... The Worcester Sharks back before the Barracuda existed where I wanted to name them the Worcester Whalers and I created a San Jose Shark I'll probably post it I'll I'll, I'll, I'll post my links of my art page and then I'll, I'll post my old cringy high school project final <laughs> project um, I haven't posted today so I'll probably post that today as an example of the Sharks logo but as a whale so I was like big old whale big old lower lip cartoony but like familiar things like the eye and from there i just kept doing what i did and i transitioned shark tank to teal city crew we were no longer like just a blog or like news report 
like everybody else. I didn't want to be that. We don't post stuff like breaking news. We'll post like, like we just, we, we saw the leak. Everybody saw the leak. Um, and with Teal City Crew, we have a little bit of a responsibility to not like push buttons with the front office. And if we do, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jonathan Becker. You're definitely going to sorry, listen Doug to Bent. this one. Oh, yes, they are. <laughs> Doug you see Jonathan, what Kirk's I'm talking for, about. <laughs> I'm sorry for what I did in the past. I've learned and now I'm a professional. Uh, what else what else can I say, right? I I, I leaked the All-Star game one year. Uh, but other other platforms I know, but other people did too. Um, at the same time. I got the same information from someone else. And I learned my lesson, you know? They got a lot stricter with the information that I knew and stuff like that so i get it i did a, i did a big no-no but um i wasn't an employee at the time and now i am uh i got a check in everything that has my name and the san jose sharks right next to it that's amazing <laughs> so i guess in between what i was talking about in that check uh during covid i've been been doing management and retail worked at a bowling alley i worked at Buffalo Wild Wings. I did, God, like I've done a million things and the bowling alley, I realized took up way too much of my time. Like, like valuable time. You know, there's, there's downtime and there's valuable time. Now I'm an artist. So as many of artists, artists do, we don't go to bed until three or four in the morning because our best work happens at one in the morning for some of us. And Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, sadly, and, uh, that doesn't work out for me with my nine to five anymore. I have to adapt to exactly pushing through, even though I'm half asleep. <laughs> yeah. And so I would like, you know, Teal City Crew was really tough because that's an everyday job that I don't get paid for. I live alone with my girlfriend. If the bills don't get paid, the lights don't turn on. We're SOL and we're kicked out. And um, during COVID, I wasn't working, got unemployment, uh, but I slowly was, was learning the realities of what I want to do. And so I did the dive with my girlfriend's support, of course, reluctant, you know, this is very scary and there's a lot of repercussions if it doesn't work. I'm still receiving repercussions because it doesn't it doesn't necessarily work the way I want to until it's a full time. You know, I'm doing freelance stuff now. And it started with COVID because I started applying for big kid jobs. You know, uh, I applied. The first job that I applied for was for New Mexico United, uh, which play in USL championship, which is one below MLS. And I knew the lead designer and he and I spoke and it wasn't the right fit. I wasn't ready for it. it. It was like, it was, it was a senior social media manager and I didn't have that. I had the experience from Teal City Crew, which I'm very lucky that a lot of the experience is self-made. It's creating experience out of nothing. And that's what I encourage all creators to do. Um, but then I started applying more and then I started talking to people and I found that that was much more proactive. Like I can apply on teamworkonline.com all day, all night to a million jobs across the country that I'm willing to move for that my wonderful supportive girlfriend uh, agrees to move to a certain state, you know, like we're not moving to Texas, we're not moving to Florida, but uh, so there's states that we like, just last night we were at uh i was working the earthquakes and i'll get into that in a second uh i was working in an earthquakes game and i turn around to her because she she's lucky that when i'm working she can watch the game from right behind me and i said vancouver because we were playing they were playing the white caps last night and she's like oh i'm like well we'd have to get married because visa and like as my girlfriend you couldn't get the visa with me so we'd have to get married, which I mean, it happens like, you know, we're still going to get married just if I got a job in another country. 
definitely would have to make that jump. But um, yeah, so it, it started with conversations. Uh, one thing led to another. I started working for National Women's Soccer League. Uh, some one of the uh, what was it? The social media director was leaving the Portland Timbers and Thorns, and her replacement had a freelance job that he had to completely cut out of his, you know, of his timing. Uh, cause it's all like self-scheduled. So it's super freelance. You could have a full-time job and still pick up this job. Uh, cause you pick up, you know, a, a, you know, a Benjamin and a little bit more for two hours of your time. And I basically do social media now because I took his job who moved up and she moved out of, uh, the, the position. So I just picked up his, his pieces, uh, in, a lower tier job in a freelance job and I'll do uh, specific games for NWSL and I absolutely love it. I love, uh, I, I love representing these amazing people in an amazing league. That's getting a lot of, um, I, I don't know. I don't know how to like put it. There's just so many moving parts of NWSL that I absolutely love. And I fan, I fanboy over cause it's such a great league. I love um, the inclusive way that they promote things. Like, um, I primarily follow all rain and I love when, especially I think this past month when they were doing something related to pride and they just had a whole reel of actual players. I mean, they have a lot of out and proud players, but just getting them into it and then also getting folks who, who don't identify as queer. It just, that that is something that I would love to see in hockey, but I don't see it happening anytime soon. But it's just something that sticks out to me that differentiates from from what I see when I um, like on hockey. Teams. It's it's definitely a breath of fresh air that I can highlight amazing people without worrying about the 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 underlying tones of oh we want to gay it up but not too much right mm -hmm. of co corporate of corporate led teams which um, is kind of how i feel about austin again we won't get off track i will talk <laughs> about it later but that come on matthew mcconaughey let's do this <laughs> oh uh, god he's the worst i uh i know just won't say it because he's like anything. oh but i'm in texas don't want to don't want to anger the conservatives anyway sorry don't want i don't want to get impede. off track <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's great because like, sure. We're going to get like anytime Megan Rapino is brought in to the conversation, of course, we're going to get comments upon comments from the same sunglassed holding up a fish in his truck, uh, dudes commenting on Facebook and it's, it's hilarious to me. Because there are so many more prominent queer individuals within the soccer, the, the women's soccer universe. I mean, yes, she's absolute the queen. She's married Sue Bird. Power couple. Power couple. Goals. Good Lord. So, so successful. So happy. So sweet. And, <laughs> right? <laughs> So much sweat. <laughs> okay. And they're, at, they're they're amazing athletes. Sorry. Um, and and so so when whenever like I think about stuff like I can I can post about anybody I want without worrying about repercussion because they're gonna we're gonna receive it regardless, just like any other league. But it's specific players. You know, Alex Morgan, amazing. I, I just got to tweet about Alex Morgan last week. I, I can't tell any, can anybody else say that? No, like, like there's a very small handful of people that can tweet to a large audience of 260,000 people on Twitter about Alex Morgan scoring a goal and leading the league in goals. And we also get to see amazing players um, you know, we, we have, and I, I'm, I feel so terrible cause I forgot her name, but 
we have a player that is handicapped. She has one hand. I know who you're talking playing, about. I can't remember yeah. her name right now. She's playing so professional soccer at the highest level in the United States. And she has one hand. That's amazing. I get to tweet about stuff like that. I mean, I'm not going to tweet specifically about the handicap, but I get to tweet that she scored a goal. Oh my God. That's amazing. Uh, and I think a lot of leagues should look to the NWSL for advice about how they handle criticism. Uh, not the real criticism, but like the the generic bullcrap like yeah. criticism. That's tough. Um, from NWSL, I got another job from again somebody I know. It's not what it's not what you know. It's who you know uh, in the industry. If you know, closed mouths don't get fed. And uh, I like to keep my mouth open. I'm hungry. <laughs> I want more. <laughs> And uh, so I started doing VAR assisting. Now that sounds like a super interesting job. It's not. I sit next to a TV. I pull it up if there's a penalty on my side of the field. And in four games that I've played, it's only happened once on my side. I was very lucky. Uh, and it's only happened twice total in a total of four games. And only once on my side. So, And then all I do is pull up a TV, make sure the referee has... The video feed and if something's wrong i have a backup microphone or a, a walkie talkie that he can talk to var and uh what used to be in the building is now just like uh in toronto like we're going to toronto to get the, mm -hmm. the announcement sort of thing um we now have it in atlanta for mls and uh so i'm i work with a contractor to do that and then the big one, San Jose Sharks. Uh, the big fish. I first reached out. Yes. Ooh, I like that one. That's going to be the name of my, my autobiography. <laughs> the big fish. Uh, oh, that's already a movie and a book. Darn. The big teal I don't fish. I want to get sued. Dig it. And um, so I, I, I had a friend message me and said, hey, there's this thing. It's not a job per se, uh, but check it out. And what I applied for was for the San Jose Sharks Creative Fellowship Program presented by Adobe. And I applied and I don't have a laptop. I'm on a desktop and I didn't get a call. And I still didn't get a call. It was coming up. And I got an email saying I didn't get it. And it killed me. Like of all the job offers that I got, I, 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 I told myself that this was the only one that I would allow myself to get hurt. Because uh, you put your heart and soul into something that you love so much. And you take personally that I didn't get it. And I'm on my way to work. And I get this call from a 408-999 number, which is the San Jose Sharks. And the last four is whoever's extension. And I thought it was my ticket rep. And I'm like, dude, what do you want? I don't have money. I can't, I can't buy tickets this year. Like, don't you know, COVID happened and, and I'm out of my job and all that. And I said, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to check my voicemail real quick. I get to work. I'm in the back of a GameStop because I was working at GameStop and hey Curtis this is uh, Mike with the San Jose Sharks uh, I know we previously uh, declined uh, your request to, to, to work in our creative program uh, but we'd like to reinstate you and, and see if we can get you on board here cried I cried in the back of a GameStop okay there's a good title for <laughs> <laughs> for for my autobiography um and uh i called him back right away i was late for work i i, I, I clocked in like three minutes late but my, my boss understood this was so i could get this job it was a job to get a job and from there they basically said you know we we, we changed our policy there's a lot of people who don't have laptops uh, we're going to work more remotely. You're used to working remotely because of the last two years. We'll make it work. And it happened. 
And uh, this was an, amal an amalgamation of years and years of dedication to my craft and the people that I've met and the relationships that I've created and the sustainability of these relationships because I respect every single person I've worked with, both people who I care about now and people who have even stabbed me in the back. I, I, I appreciate it because this, that's how I got to where I am today. You know, your constructive criticism is what made me a better person. Whether you were right or wrong, I changed for the better. And look at me now, mom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's and, and it's not done. Obviously, you know, I'm, I've, I've applied for multiple teams. Please answer me, LAFC. I'd absolutely love to move to Los Angeles for you. Um, just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> I know. It, and the thing and the thing is, that's another thing. That's actually a great thing that you brought up because we're talking about like in general sports marketing. <laughs> yes. Uh, is is once you become a part of of sports marketing or sports in general mm -hmm. in the front office you become the biggest fan of that team it doesn't matter if you actually like that team i'll work for the ducks i'll work for the kings and i'll be their number one fan and i will support them in their success but the second i clock out or if i'm on an off day and the sharks are playing them i'm gonna wear my sharks jersey to the office say what's up go down the hallway and go watch my team kick my own team's butt <laughs> that pay me <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's that healthy balance. Um Yeah, that's my that's my creative story. Sorry that took a long time, but that's I it's it's a it's a long path, not just for me and um the one message I'd like to send to everybody, I've got a lot of messages. Is because this also affects a lot of young queer people, especially artists is don't let college be the reason why you don't continue pursuing your dreams. I know a lot of people do take a college route and that's great and that's absolutely awesome and more power to you. I, I, I hope you do your best in paying back your loans and it's a struggle and I get it and I understand and I hope you get that uh, grant that you signed up for. But if it is not an option, do not stop chasing your dreams because college was not an option for me in our financial bracket. And I moved forward and I kept going and I created relationships where I don't have to fake it till I make it. I'm making it because I made it. And so if you are not in college, please apply for that job. Please create your portfolio. You got to work just as hard as a college student. Keep learning. And, uh, YouTube University pros are using it. I'm just letting you know now The the most famous graphic designers and social media content creators and that team that you love watching on social media, they're all learning it from YouTube. I don't care what college tells you. Most of it's on YouTube. You know, what's funny is when I went to college, I went to an art school. Don't recommend my uh, condolences. <laughs> there's, there's pros Wait, and cons to that. They, yeah. a lot of the assignments were, oh, here, I'll send you a link to this video so you can learn how to do it. What am I paying all these thousands of dollars for? I'm in debt just to learn from YouTube. So skip art school. Just go to YouTube University. I mean, I will say, um, in, in my experience going through college, um, I'm the older of everybody in this room. So at the time that was the only path for me. Um, and I didn't go into college to do art. I actually went in and followed the stereotypical path of most Asian folks and I was going to get into medicine and realized that that doesn't align with my, um, with with what I'm really good at I I am a creative and it just it wasn't it wasn't working out for me and midway through I changed majors I had a roommate at the time who essentially was doing what I ended up switching over to to digital media and um, the call it after after graduating 
I ran into a series of just real world stuff. I got a job, got laid off, recession happened. Basically, just at the time, I wasn't going to get a job as an undergraduate, um, who, someone who had a bachelor's degree but no experience. And I went through all of my bumps in the road, went back to school, and tried to get back into the industry. So, you know, it, it's not a linear path, even when you do go through college. But what has been the most rewarding is the experience along the way is learning how to persevere and how to um, to find you know the the like having those connections as you talked about you knew somebody who was able to help you out and ultimately I feel that even in this super saturated environment now where folks can you know don't necessarily have to go through through typical brick and mortar college to get that degree. I've noticed that folks have been lifting each other up, especially in the age of social media, which was not something that I had at my fingertips per se. Um, I didn't get into really doing social media until after I graduated. And I feel like I completely missed an entire like boat of like opportunity. I was going through like, oh, just meet people through college. They'll help you along the way. And it just didn't work out that way. But um, especially right now with how me and Nessa got started through the, the Pride Project, that was really the first time in a while that I really got to tell stories. Like I primarily come from a background of videography, telling stories through moving pictures. And, and then I got into a bit of web design, you know, after that, but my, the thing that I am most passionate about is telling stories and through the pride project, I got to do that. I got to structure things in a way that we, we got to share some of the most compelling moments in people's interviews. And then, you know, starting this podcast now, you know, as you mentioned with Teal City Crew, because you're not connected to necessarily owned by a, like a bigger organization, you do get to have that flexibility, even though you might not have the financial support, you do get to have that flexibility of how you govern the space that you're, that you're, you're sharing with the world. This is and your platform. Yeah. And I think you, that's- You built the foundation of that platform. Yeah, and I think that's something that me and Nessa, you know, when we when we have our discussions, it's our our brains can go wild with what is our next step versus feeling like, well, no, we can't necessarily do that because not that's not the brand, you know. Like we're we're fig. I mean, obviously, you you kind of need. I to don't think you should be saying that. that. <laughs> like what do you the, mean? The, the big the no the big no the big wig saying in your ear like. I don't think we should be saying that. Let's try a different direction. Yeah. I had to go the low voice. We don't, oh. yeah, we don't have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, you know, in some ways something that we're, we're, we've been passionate about for a while. We just haven't been able to figure out how can we harness and um, share that with the world. I mean, we're still figuring yeah. it out. <laughs> yeah i'm i'm sorry you're not figuring it out you've got it look who you've got on the show you i'm not talking about me i'm totally not that wasn't me i'm, ta oh, I'm talking about like you got, you, got, you got a professional hockey player on this on this podcast i have never had a professional hockey player i've i've third party donated money with uh evander kane before scandal uh oh yeah i like, have one of those scarves yeah and so, like, thank you for the support. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but you've actually had, like, a player directly on your show. That is success. Yeah, that is a win. I guess. 100%. Well, I did have a very lovely time talking with him. He's such a good dude. This, but, he is a really good uh, example of what you were talking about, allies being the ones fighting our battles. Because he is doing that work. Yeah, he is. And look at the names he's getting called. 
You know what I mean? Like it's the attack. It's the it's it's the attack, but his it's his perseverance that keeps going. His perseverance is what's making his voice actually bigger, and and actually, the criticism that he's receiving, is also, great. You know, like the the phrase the 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 all knowing phrase of, uh, any publicity is good publicity. A straight ally hockey player, with a model of a girl girlfriend wife. I, I, I forgot. Girlfriend. 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 Like, is supporting LGBT rights. And now now all these haters are talking, building his platform for him. Little do they know that he's actually making a point and you are all this experiment in his, you know, big old brain of, of this is what I'm trying to do. This is what I'm sending a message out to. And these people are helping him. And it's great. Using the enemy as their own ammo. Yeah. And that and that's what we had the most fun talking about when he was on. We didn't necessarily want to ask him about, you know, particular games or anything like that. Um, we just wanted to learn about his experience and just kind of have a conversation about those areas of hockey that aren't being talked about, you know. And I think there's I think it's great when there's other podcasts that will have the athlete on and they'll talk about strictly hockey stuff. I mean, we're hockey fans. We want to hear about that too. But when we brought him on, we kind of um, outlined that conversation to talk about all those things that, I mean, on one hand, if you're a podcast of cishet white men, yeah, maybe not talk about queer things because I, I, that, that, that can, that can get a little, you know what I'm talking about? You, you, we don't want folks like that talking about the community from the outside looking in. Like we already, we already experienced all that. But to have someone come on the platform that is has representation of folks within the queer community, I felt that that was important for us to talk about those topics. And and look, you got him on your show. So we were talking about success. That's where this conversation started. Y'all are successful. I love it. Well, he, <laughs> he offered, actually. We were we were like, we don't think we're ready to, like, ask people. We'll see where this goes. And then people just started volunteering. Hey, I'd love to come on your podcast. We're like, I guess we're doing That's this actually, now. That brings up, <laughs> that brings up something that, that I even use. Uh, so I use for my, my daily affirmation. If you were not, what was it? Because I have it written down. Um, if you were not presented this opportunity, you would have, or if you weren't worth this opportunity, it would have never been presented to you. So the fact that you created the platform, he came to you, shows the success even before he came on the show. One episode in. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it starts from somewhere i know but I'm it doesn't mean you have a great platform so i'm, I'm just trying to, to pump you guys up because y'all deserve pumped. it and thank you for having me I feel <laughs> <laughs> um goalie pile we got rid of hill we went to vegas and so let's talk how do we feel about our goalies uh well with the new goalie coach with with a you know we still have Nabokov as an advisor, right? Nabokov's mm -hmm. the advisor, yeah. But he's stepping down a little bit from goalie coaching. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think it needs to be more competitive. I think that every single person from the top down should have an opportunity if they're consistent. I also believe that two thirds. I'm a goalie, by the way. That's something I don't tell people very often. What's up? Exactly. Uh, so, uh, I'm a goalie and we get tired. Please stop doing this 65 game goalie thing. We don't have that generational goalie. We don't have a Saros. We don't have a Kucherov, uh, or, uh, sorry, Vasilevsky. Uh, we don't have a Vasilevsky. Yeah. Sorry. We don't have a Vasilevsky. Different Russian. Sorry. Um, and 
we just don't have that and we have to accept that and that's okay because there are other successful teams that have tandems not tandem i don't want a tandem that's what got us into this problem anyway because you create that competitiveness of having a starter having the backup and using the backup not to pull the goalie when it's 6-2 we're pulling the we're we're switching goalies on day 1 we had Niemi, we have Nidamaki, we had Nidamaki for a for a cup of coffee. But we had goalies that could play 50 plus games but also got rest when they needed. Why are we playing Martin Jones back-to-back -back nights? Why are we playing you know what I mean like all of our goalies have been playing back-to-back -back nights and that's not fair to the goalie that's behind him because they're a team and they should be a part of the team but i'd like to see competitive uh assessment because we could get somebody great we also want i, I want to see competition i don't care if you get paid six mil a year or you know 400k a year if you play well you play well and i'd love to get you a raise if you play well I will say we definitely did not do well last season with how we were playing. Um, like, yeah, the, the issues that we had when we, um, we seemed blind by the fact that Jones was having problems and needed just some time to, like, kick back for a little bit, give the backup goalie some, you know, some games. But last season was beyond ridiculous. I think there were a number of times where – Reimer played back-to-back -back games, and for what? We weren't going to make the playoffs. Why are you even doing that? And I really hope with this new lineup of coaches that they don't do that. And, I mean, they have already mentioned that Kakanen is going to be the starter. And I, and I want him to have that opportunity that he didn't get with the Wild. That's and, why he came here. Or at least that's, that's what he believes. Um, I, um, he's a starter. He's absolutely a starter. 100%. I think he came here because the wild. The there were there were a couple seasons where I think they brought him up and he was inconsistent. And I think at the time they felt because he was an RFA, right? And at that point, they I think they figured, well, we're we're kind of done trying with him. Not to say that he shouldn't get the opportunity to continue developing and get a starter role somewhere, but he was definitely not going to be their starter. I, I, I also see that too. It's it's a lot about making sure that we give him the experience that he deserves. And give him more time because anybody can prove something during practice or not prove something in practice. I'm terrible at practice. Put me in a game. I don't know how I stop things. You know what I mean? Like it's it's that competitive nature of having a crowd of, you know, 17,000 plus. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's it's uh I mean, practice is one thing. You you already know, oh, it's not too big of a deal. I can kind of like kick back for a little bit because if I don't stop this goal, you know, you try to stay in that mode like you're in a game, but it's not until you get into the game where you kind of turn it up like the extra notch. Exactly. And that's something that Curtis was talking about uh, when he was on the taxi squad. It's just really hard to stay game focused when you don't actually get to be in that game mode where you're just going through the practice you're like okay going through the drills okay we're gonna play a little scrimmage it's just like your head's not there as much as you want to be yeah what's our next one how are you feeling about this upcoming season confident i know i know that's it's really? a blind you know everybody every i am the we can go oh and 82 and i'm the biggest fan in the world so I guess that's really hard to ask me, but I also know the sport of hockey. So I, I also know that there's a little bit of luck. There's a little bit of hard work and dedication. And with a, ch a little tiny change could change the world. Look at the 2000, um, look at the, the 2010s LA Kings. 
They had a great coach. They won three cups. But with who? A bunch of drop-offs? Doesn't that... Tell me... If, stop me if this sounds familiar. A bunch of drop-offs that came from other teams with a few star players that were drafted by the team, the home team, win a Stanley Cup. Besides, the, the only thing we're missing is a Jonathan Quick. And he's a generational player, so that's... That's the luck that we were talking about, you know? It's... It's... Gosh, like, you know what I mean? It, I think we could actually be competitive this year if the players choose to be. Or you're just wasting a season. You're wasting a full calendar year of days of your life. You can you can play. You can play 82 games. And if you win, you win. If you lose, you lose. You move on to the next one and uh, go 82 and out. Whatever. I mean, I'm optimistic about the outlook with the, I mean, with the new GM, with the complete coaching change. I'm fine with them hacking the the roster by half and bringing in some new guys. Um, I mean, yeah, it's not someone to write home about and, and won't be, you know, on the front page news, but we, we don't have that, op- we don't have that as an option right now our hands are tied like we're trying to rebuild you know the draft picks for the future and um i think maybe probably where you're also coming from is i'm just excited for something different because we could have just gotten a new gm and maybe kept bugner and signed all the folks that the uh, people are upset that we let go But if we only tweak one or two things, I would feel less optimistic about the outlook of the team. And, you know, we we don't have we can't we can't do a full rebuild and just suck for a couple years like the owner will will not accept that. And we just have to accept that that's going to be the case, because if you don't have an owner, this team is is not going to be here. And I would hate to see the sharks leave the area because it would just be devastating to me. I don't think, I don't think that's a financial viability though. I think the whole SAP center thing was kind of a scare tactic. I'm not going to get into the politics of that, but like definitely staying. Uh, But I'm not thinking about it in that term. I'm just thinking about, you know, success and, yeah, so folks who just want to be like, let's just do a full rebuild. Like, we don't have that luxury to do that. Yeah. You know? You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not we're not Toronto. You know? They're, they will stick by... I mean, they have been sticking by their team. <laughs> but we, we're not... We're not in an area that eat, lives, breathes hockey. We've got... I mean, majority of my friends... Um, that I just meet along the way. They follow the Warriors. They follow the San Francisco Giants. Like, they find it weird that, like, or they ask me a bunch of questions about hockey because they have no idea. So we're not in an area where we we have that option to just tank severely and then be be confident that folks will stick what around. Last, the last time we had a rebuild? We went to the Stanley Cup final in our rebuild year. I mean, mm-hmm. twenty the beginning of 2015, 2016 season, they said we are in a rebuild. That's the only time Doug Wilson Did ever said. I don't think I don't think I've ever heard that from any of the Doug Wilson said the it. Organization. Day one. It was in mm-hmm. preseason. He was quoted saying we are in a rebuild and he rebuilt in in the middle of the season. Of course, we don't have the same cap space as we did back then. We didn't have we don't have the um the depth of minor same leagues. Captain. Yeah, we don't have the same captain. Uh, that's a whole other <laughs> topic I am not going to touch because I don't want people to kill me. Uh, remember the phrase uh, that I said earlier? Closed mouths don't get fed. <laughs> closed, closed mouth captains don't get representation. That's. I'll leave it at that. We got to talk more. We have conversations. Have conversations with the refs. I'm being civil here. <laughs> like it's. I think Logan can do it. I think Logan can 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 keep that C if he 
builds that conversation with his team and makes sure that it, everyone knows it's it's his team. He can lead. I absolutely believe it. His his upbringing, he absolutely can can lead. I know we're talking about goalies. Now we're talking about Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who do you think is the biggest threat within the Pacific Division for the upcoming season? Vancouver is the silent killer. They have a bunch of young players. They have a hungry goalie. I'm not saying they're going to win the cup. I'm not saying they're even going to make the playoffs. Maybe. Whatever. You know. But I think they're going to be competitive. They're not going to lose 5 nothing. They're going to lose 3-2. When they lose, I think that makes sense, right? Like, like their wins are wins. Their losses are really close and they're going to bruise a lot of other players. Vancouver's my sleeper. Um, Anaheim has Zagros, but they're a dilapidating team. Uh, Arizona don't know what's going on there. <laughs> They Can you believe projections the- have them over the Sharks in the division right now? That's just silly. Yes and no, depending on which projections, depending on which stats. Long-term stats, absolutely not. Short-term stats, maybe. We just there's no because we're such but- we're such an uprooted team, we don't know what You're we're right, gonna be. So, you know, the people who make these projections and bet and betting betting lines and all that. This player's never played with any of these guys. So they, they can't they can't look into it because there's no statistics that would bring them up. The Ducks picked up Fiala over the offseason, didn't they? What year Fiala? I think he's a Kings did. Oh yeah. Kevin Fiala? Kings did. Yeah. King. Oh, was yeah. it the Kings? Never mind. But but yeah. it's a twenty okay. twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two Fiala. Okay. It's like when we picked up uh, Craig Reve. We picked up Craig Reve. Sorry, this is for for the old school Sharks fans. We picked up Craig Reve. Cool. Played, I think, 13 games for the Sharks. Bill Guerin. Half a season. Was the cap... Was he the captain for five seconds? No. I forgot. No, he was not. I don't remember. Yeah. No. Like Islanders, Islanders legend now. Bill Guerin. But... <laughs> Rob Blake? I I think the Flames are going to be a threat. The Flames and the Oilers. Even yeah. though because. even though Goudreau and Kachuk left, who they brought in from Florida, and, um, I mean, Markstrom was insane last season. I mean, he kind of, like, deflated in the playoffs, but... Um, we don't know what injuries they had. I... That's true. Um, I'd say my secondary, even though I don't want to, I feel like he who shall not be named. Yeah. Resigning with them. Yeah. I mean, when they That's brought nice. him in during whatever, I think it was shortly after um, the holiday break and just changed. Yeah, it's just it just was night and day. And well, they they, they let they, him take the, they they let him take the metaphorical leash off the player. When 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 you have you know, because they have no, uh, what is it like, mental connection with him about any allegation or anything like that. It's, you know, we just signed a great player. Same thing happened to us. We let him off the leash. He absolutely killed it, and then. The second you start restraining a player, of course they're going to start falling off. So here he is doing what he knows what to do freely without any stresses of the media kind of caring currently. That's a whole other episode. Uh, But now you have now you have this 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 unhinged player that just wants to be successful in play and has no distractions. And then they picked up um, Campbell. So they 
they retool their goaltending because now they won't have. I I'd, I'd imagine they're not going to have forty year old Mike Smith playing majority of the games this upcoming season. <laughs> so he's always fun to watch. How are we feeling about them? <laughs> no, I know, I know. Uh, I think well, the players said it For all. those who okay. listen on not YouTube, you know, so they know what I'm pointing at. Uh, um, I hope that Hill doesn't um, find his or a villain origin story with them because uh, I'm totally still going to happen. I'm still recovering. Totally going to happen. No. I'm still recovering from um, Pete DeBoer basically throwing us under the bus and then running over us several times. Uh, I liked him as a coach, and then in that moment when he did that, I'm like, "You're dead to me." Yep. Uh, <laughs> I s- trash. You know, bias aside, I think the players have said it all. It's a bad organization. They had a great start, but uh, they're seeing the snake oil that it is, and people aren't getting paid. Things aren't happening. It's in a relatively toxic area for people who are not from there. For people who do live there, you know, you have you have the established players that have built a, you know, I live in Henderson kind of attitude. Like, you have a team... That could do great with the money that they have, but they're throwing money everywhere. They're currently in this weird rebuild of like, oh God, Seattle had it right the whole time sort of thing. Like, I don't think they're going to be successful right now, but they're definitely going to be scary in a few years when they start developing and like, you know, creating their space within the Pacific Division and in the league. Because Vegas had high promises. They kept promising and promising and it's like, Sorry, you had one missing piece every single time. And what that is, is player happiness, authentic happiness, not not writ happiness. Is there a snake in the room? That was weird, they yeah. Can, I think they can be it's scary Vegas. in the next couple of seasons if they change what's happening in their front office. And I think it, it's, it's, it's one of those changes, like super quick changes. It's, do they have the guts to make that change? Like, you know. I don't think so. No, I of think they're not. Um, because because of the first season that they have, they now have this extremely hard, high bar to reach. They, the only the only path now is back to the cup. It's not even making the playoffs. You need to get all the way back up there. It's and like win we're it. not so different, you and I. Oh my God, Kurt. I have, I was at the Game 7 Same. game, the Game 7 Same. game, before the game started, whatever, Chrissy and I, my girlfriend and I went down to the ice to watch warm-ups, we were behind the player benches, I think, watching, whatever, and then the trainer guy, I forget his name, you know, sometimes he'll like toss warm-up pucks to people, we had a flag that said um, San Jose effing hockey from like bring hockey back. Shout out to those dudes. <laughs> and he he saw the flag. He was like, and he gave us a puck. So I have a puck sitting right there from Game Seven. That's amazing. Of the 2019 playoffs, historic. Love, Love it. it. <laughs> I will say that the Game Six was the greatest Easter of all time. <laughs> like I was at a bar, we were at a barbecue yeah. watching the game on a phone, and the barbecue started like it started getting dark, and it was one of those big family ones, so they don't end until like dark. And we drove straight to San Pedro Square because we heard that it was going into OT, and so like we went straight over there, and by the time we got there, it started. Everybody's like pointing at me, and they're like, "Kurt's here." Brianna's here. My girlfriend. Oh, they're all here. Cool. All right. And then how much hurdle has scores that goal. And he's like, because we're the better team. I'm like, ah, oh. perfect timing. Best Easter ever. Sorry. Small story time. <laughs> Do you believe in the self Jersey curse? 
Oh no! Oh no, he no, does. No, I don't. I don't. I, I personally don't. Is there okay. heavy coincidence? I think not. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, Incredibles reference. Um, I don't personally think that a piece of fabric can cause a team to lose, but I think there is a mentality that was created by the players, or there is a fit issue with how thick the fabric is. Uh, which is a thing because I've put on different jerseys, like authentic jerseys in the past. And I'm like, damn, how do players wear this one? But they'll wear like this other one from another team that's super lightweight because it doesn't have 7 million different layers. Black jerseys tend to be a little heavier because of the, not just the pigment, but like the style of fabric that they use. So I'm going to plead the fifth because logic says absolutely <laughs> not. Doesn't exist. Stats say otherwise. I would kill it in that jersey. Like, I, do you know how bad I want black and teal goalie pads because of like a stealth style goalie yes. pad? And now I work at a hockey store. And I'm new, so I'm not going to say it right away, but it's obvious which one. <laughs> and uh, it's only one. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah I I would I would feel like I would feel like a million bucks wearing that jersey same thing with like the Dallas Stars black and green jerseys which totally killed it Jay doesn't like them really <laughs> the what? Dallas what? jersey Jay doesn't like them yeah the black ones I, I did not say I <laughs> don't like them it's just I want to like them, but I'm not there yet, so I'm kind of in neutral territory. But last episode, me and Nessa talked about it, and she likes it oh, blinding green, up. and I would not want it blinding green. I understand how it would work out better on a soccer field, but when you're on the ice and it's already light, it's blinding. All right. You would it's blind not, I'm gonna, the players. I'm going to say it right now, because I watched the last episode. Seattle's colors are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and we're ending this episode goodbye Kurt I goodbye Kurt I will tell you why is it more amazing than the sharks that's that's no, the little no because there's a there's a representation of it okay, okay. there's a okay. representation You're, of it you can stay on the pod there's now. a representation <laughs> the color scheme and why it fades is because of the bottom of the ferry boats and that was the, that's what they were quoted just saying mm. so the arm the armband the dark blue at the bottom where the hands are where the gloves are is supposed to be the water and then the rest of the striping, including that red stripe, are what create uh, creates the water scheme or the uh, side of the ferry boat scheme. Oh, I love it even more now. Sorry, Jay. I love that. Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, I I love the color scheme. I just don't Being love in it our division? more than the sh than the sharks color. All I said was sometimes I love the color teal. It's my favorite Wait, oh. color. Don't get it twisted. I have I have some USB C cords <laughs> no, in teal. No, but I have cups that are teal. They they did such a good job with their colors. I can appreciate that. And they had they had a reasoning behind it. And I'm still mad they didn't use that fairy boat yeah. horn that they used in the in the preview video as their goal horn. Still mad. Change it, Seattle. You still have a chance. Yeah, just so we're clear, I like the color palette, but in our conversation last episode, <laughs> Nessa was on the fence. <laughs> And that is why I was making faces like. <laughs> okay, <laughs> number listen. one fan right here. One thing, the sharks, like I said, love teal. Wish they used more of it. This is a nice little segue, <laughs> which is something we'll talk about after this. But go on. <laughs> nice little segue. I don't know yeah. if Kurt's allowed to talk about it. Uh, okay. We all saw I, it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it or not, but because I am a representative of it, I won't talk about it. My opinion on it, there's work to do. That's all. That's it. I'm, and I, I, did, think so too. I think that... I did see right before this episode, um, Shang had, uh, had an article out, and it was comparing it to the, the kit that the, um, the SEALs had. And so I can see the inspiration behind that. And I... Can appreciate it more it's just i really want 
the pants to break up everything. Well, if you want a classic feel, then you just... get the black pants with the teal lines and the white line down the middle. Because that's the classic shell mm. color from 91. Yeah, I think so too, if they were black. But I also wouldn't be mad if they did keep teal on teal. And I just think... <sighs> for those for those listening I not on YouTube, on. I just zipped my mouth shut and made faces. <laughs> Judgingly. I... I just judge me all you want. I just want. I just want the sharks to do something different. And if bringing teal pants with a teal jersey is a way to do start something, then let it happen. I love the fact that they'd be possibly bringing in teal helmets. They need more teal. It's the best color in the league. Let them have more. I appreciate that. That's the artist in us saying that. Alrighty, so as we kind of close out this episode, is there anything that you would like to shout out? Have any plans for the upcoming uh, Teal City Crew season? With my employment uh, and with, well, once November hits, because it is a fellowship, so it's a short class, basically. Um, with it ending in November, uh, I highly encourage creatives to apply. Uh, to the winter one that they're currently scheduling. Uh, so once it pops up on Teamwork Online, make sure you go apply because it is a great opportunity to get your foot in the door in the sports marketing world. Uh, like I said, totally selfless. I should be talking about myself, but here I am. Uh, <laughs> um, Teal City crew-wise, uh, there's not much, uh, honestly. Uh, right now, I am looking for leadership to kind of step up if anybody's interested in joining us learning who we are and what we do uh our our dms are always open i will video chat i will hang out now that covid's not gone but we're all pretending that it's gone uh let's go to lunch and um you know let's talk let's talk hockey i'd love to have conversations like this in in irl irl um <laughs> atm machine sorry in irl <laughs> Um, and, uh, I, 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 I'd love to have conversations with, uh, Sharks fans. So, you know, if you're interested in doing more or if you have a skill or a company that wants to work with us, like, and you want that creative freedom to do stuff, uh, our number one rule is that TCC is not your personal army, but we absolutely can help, uh, raise up some local businesses, some great individuals and build a better community tomorrow. We have a great platform that we can use uh, to do stuff. As for personal stuff, uh, I am currently looking for employment within the sports marketing world. Uh, so if you are listening or watching, I'm absolutely interested in uh, graphic design, social media, marketing, and merchandise design. And let's see what else. And me personally, I'm going to SoCal in October. I think I... Sorry, I'm, I think I'm doing like the the the, the hot um, hot ones where they they say, "Look at this camera, look at that camera," and uh, say what you're doing. So I'm going to be going to Los Angeles to my first LAFC match to see uh, how they actually do it in in real life and see uh, if that's the right fit because my soccer team currently is in a bunch of controversies and I don't want to be a part of their front office. <laughs> <laughs> I love the hot ones oh, yeah. show. Great one. Hot ones, great one. <laughs> All right. And with that, we'd like to thank Kurt for coming on to the show. We had a lovely time chatting with you. And we'll see you all on the next episode. I am your host, Jay. And this, uh, please like, follow, subscribe, something. Hit that bell. Grow the channel. Maybe we'll do a giveaway soon. Help us grow. Oh, how about this? How about this? Before the show ends. Any subscriber gets a Teal City Crew scarf. Uh, one one lucky winner will get a Teal City Crew scarf. Bam. I'll donate one for y'all. Boom. Thank you. Can I uh, You'll get one anyway. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> there we go. Both of y'all get one. <laughs> <laughs>